or a screenplay. Um, sometimes they're rather large. Sometimes it's just a whole long, I mean, you guys have all seen a play. It's two hours. Clearly, we can't stand up here for two hours and do the entire play. Uh, we only have some minutes. So what I like to do is to go through the entire script and bracket off um, my favorite parts, parts that speak to me, parts that uh, just resonate for me in some way, and put them in pencil because goodness knows they're going to change. And um, just don't even look for a storyline at first. Just bracket off your favorite parts, right? So then once you have all those, read back through and figure out what exactly is going on, which story you seem to focus on. Because within a show, within a play, there's bound to be you know one main plot and then several subplots, right? Several different characters. There are sub-characters. There are nuances they go through. And what we have the opportunity to do in creating our own dramatic interpretation is take away some of the subplots, specify it down to one main plot, one main thesis, one main thing you want to prove. Um, so once you've bracketed everything off, you'll notice that some parts, this is the hard part, because you'll notice that some of the brackets have parts that you really love in them, like monologue that you could just you love, and but it just has nothing to do with the rest of your piece. So you gotta cut it out. So, um, and that's when you form your storyline, right? This is my little storyline diorama. There we go. And here's how it goes. What again? It's the same. It's the same with poetry, which I, I apologize for this seen this before, but it's pretty much the same deal. I always look for the climax first. The climax is the emotional shift of your character. It is where your character changes. It um, exerts the most emotion. It exerts the most. Um, it's the hardest part to do. It's also the part that drives from your thesis. So, but what's most important, I feel, that people kind of overlook sometimes in cutting a piece, is that your character, up to this point, should be, should have one, one way of, it's difficult to say, should, they should change here. Something about them should change. Something about the way they think, or who they are, because of some climax should change so that here, they are different when they are here. Let me explain. So, say you're doing a piece about a girl and um, her mother has passed away. And this whole buildup is about her just completely denying it. She doesn't believe it, doesn't believe it's happening. She thinks, you know, her mom's gonna come back to her. It's ridiculous, doesn't believe it's happening. Um, here is where she finally realizes that her mother isn't coming back. Say it's this just emotional breakdown where the, something happens, a metaphor, or um, she sees someone with their mother and looks across and her mom's not there and it's this big thing and they're in a park and there are doves. Okay, that is the <laughs> emotional climax, yeah? Because it, it just, it changes her. It's, it's what kicks her out of her denial. It's what kicks her out of all of her um, coping mechanisms that she uses up to the point where she can't cope anymore, which is the climax. And usually it is accompanied with a nice little monologue, a few tears maybe, but no. No, we don't really actually um, use tears that often in speech, um, or ever, really. Um, but basically, it's, it's, it's the part of your piece that's going to take the most out of you and drain you the most. And then, this is the resolution. This is where everything kind of comes to an end. It comes, it, it comes to a nice little neat conclusion. You wrap it all up. And while um, the character might not be okay by the end, um, it's it's defined as to why not. Any questions about the basic structure of yes? Is there an intro and everything just like in all the there other? There is. Pieces? This is why. Thank you. So this exists. Oh, okay. This is our teaser. So once you have the climax, you want to start building the rest of your story. And so I like to start with the teaser. I think it's the most fun place to start. Your teaser is like your attention-getting device in a speech. If, for those of you who have ever done speech, it's a, it's also like the beginning part of the movie, before the credits come up, where it has like a little excerpt of the movie starts, and then it goes black, and then there is the title and the credits. That's the teaser of a movie. Same kind of deal with speech. There's like a little snippet, something like a joke or something funny, or um, some part of your piece that really drives home the main point. And you want to end it on a line that kind of sums up what you're going to talk about. You know, a line that's kind of important. So that's the teaser. And then comes the intro. Um, for DI, we want to speak about a thesis, 
uh, a reason why the audience should listen, right? Um, in order to get, usually interests start with an anecdote or a quotation or a little quip, a little story, something that'll get the audience's attention. Um, Henry David Thoreau once said, Walt Walter Romans once said, um, obviously not such a cliche philosophers as those, but um, more, if you can find like, a unique statistic or a unique story that speaks about your piece specifically, that would be the answer. It's a sentence long, it's pretty short. And then you have, you explain the answer, right? Because we don't want to just leave one quotation in the air and then jump to our thesis or else, and without making the connection. Because right after you explain, you put in your thesis, what your show is about, or what your program, your um, ten minutes is going to be about, what's important, why I should listen. Um, your thesis is about a sentence song, and it states your opinion. So, say my opinion is that everyone should wear khakis on Tuesday. Okay, clearly not valid. It should be something with a little more validity to it. Yes. Oh, no. Okay, never mind. Question. Um, that was my thesis, and I would have a quotation explaining, and then I would connect, connect the quotation to the thesis, and then it ends with the title and author. Okay. This all together should be about 45 seconds to a minute, I'd say. Not very long. It's a short, short paragraph on a Word document, about that big. Maybe a little smaller. It should be pretty, pretty short. Does anyone have any questions about how to compose a piece or an introduction? How long to shake anything? I mean, I'm just giving you everything. I know some of you have done this before. I'm just kind of putting it all out there, just in case. No? We're good? All right, awesome. Okay, so once I have that, that intro sneaks in here. Right? And then coming out of your intro, you want to, well, the teaser does not necessarily have to be the first line of your script. It doesn't necessarily have to be even the beginning of your story. It can be, you know, a part of the middle of your story. Just like maybe it's like this short um, anecdote of your character when she's walking through the mall, or your character when she is, you know, um, spending time with her father, which could have happened like long before, right? It could happen in the middle of your story, but you put it in the teaser because it means something, because it drives home the central pieces of your piece. Um, and then you hop back into the beginning and, and you tell your story. And, and cut one singular story. It's important to do that. Um, not to get all mucked up with um, other, you know, other subplots that might exist in a play or a document. Okay. So, any questions about that in general? Everyone still doing okay? Mama? Okay. I'd say, honestly, the most important thing you can do is become a believable character. And, um, Make character make uh, make make your character have a certain accents. Do character bio is what we call. It. So once you have your piece, you have your cutting. It's in a book now, which is very exciting because you're almost there. Um, you're almost to a competition. It's already in there. Um, what we do in order to develop our characters, and maybe this doesn't happen before your first tournament. Maybe you've spent all your time researching and you're doing this later. Whatever. What you need to do is realize who this person is by making character bios. Character bios, uh, it's a myriad of things. 